Okay, Lord, thank you for bringing us together. Um, we ask that you would um, use this time to further your kingdom, to equip your children, to um, equip us. We ask that whoever would hear this teaching, Lord, would grow and, and learn and be challenged by it. Um, and Lord, we thank you that you, you want us to be people who are, who are always ready to receive fresh manna, fresh instruction. And so Lord, I just pray we'd be teachable and that I would be clear and that what I have to offer would, would benefit those who would hear this teaching. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Okay, so tonight I'm going to first go over the um, overview of the process. We're not really, that's not really question and answer time. We're going to have a bunch of that at the end. We're going to review something. But if you have a question that needs to be, what did you say? I didn't understand. You can interrupt and ask questions. But if you're thinking, I, I want to know this, maybe we're going to get to it in about 20 minutes. So if you have a question, you might want to jot it down um, and see if we get to it. If we don't get to it, then we can talk about it. But don't feel like all freaked out that you can't um, answer. Okay, for those of you who are watching online, this is developing a VBS curriculum. So if you're going, oh, I didn't want that. I wanted a women's Bible study, then sorry. Okay, so um, that's the order in which we're going. So first of all, when we talk about the theme for VBS, and we're trying to come up with a theme in general, um, one thing you can do is you can look at popular cultural themes at the time that VBS is coming through. We're allowed to do that. We're allowed to, like we did Angry Birds once. We did about anger because that was the popular sh uh, game. And we knew that kids off the street, they wouldn't feel so out of place at church because they'd see things familiar to them. Um, we did the circus one because of that movie. And we brought that in because it made sense. Because the, the kids who are unchurched, sometimes if they come into a church, everything is so foreign to them, they feel kind of out of place. But they go, oh, there's... Big Bird, or there's, you know, whatever. Sometimes we'll just look at the culture and we'll say, what's speaking to the kids? And how can we move from that onto something else? It's okay to look at what's trending in the culture and just be open to how it may be used to speak to children. In Acts 17.22, Paul was um, standing in the midst of Areopagus, Areopagus, and he said, men of Athens, I perceive that in all things you are very religious. Verse 23 of Acts 17. For as I was passing through and considering the objects of your worship, I even found an altar with this inscription, to the unknown God. Therefore, the one whom you worship without knowing him, I proclaim to you. So what Paul did was he found something in the culture that was a springboard to give them the gospel of Jesus Christ. They worshiped a million different gods and he was walking around thinking, how do I reach these people? Oh, they know this altar. It says to the unknown God, I'll use that as a bridge to introduce them to the, to the living God. So it's not inappropriate. You know, I remember one time we did a Whittier theme for VBS. We did the city of Whittier. And we had, we decorated, this room was like McDonald's and I was the, the teacher, so I was a post, postal carrier. I was delivering the message of the good news and we, everything had to do with green leaf and the different areas because the kids knew the area. So it's okay to use a cultural theme to bring VBS. VBS is an outreach to the unreached, as well as an outreach to kids who are in our church to you know, give them that you're important to us and we do a whole week for you. I mean, women's retreats, men's retreats, 2.3 days. Kids, they get five days, okay? Because they're worth it and they need to know that they're worth it. We have more people work on VBS than any other ministry we have at our church. It's just focus. I think it's because of Pastor John got saved at VBS when he was a little boy, and he just always had a heart for it. I never heard it. I never knew what it was. I went to Catholic school. We didn't have that. I didn't even know what it stood for. In John 4, 13, Jesus answered that woman at the well, and she said, "Whoever he said, whoever drinks of this water will thirst again, but whoever drinks of the water I give him will never thirst, but the water that I will give him will become in him a fountain of water springing up into everlasting life. So he used all these words, water, well. Why? Because right in front of them, there was a well. And that's why sometimes at VBS, when you're creating the theme, before you even write the curriculum, you can kind of see what's trending among the kids um, and see how to utilize that. Like he used with this Samaritan woman, that well that was there, because she related to that well. And he, she wasn't Jew, she was a half-breed, she was a Samaritan. So she, if you tried to use all these Jewish terms, she wouldn't relate to him. 
So we can always create a theme based upon our culture. It's not taboo. It's not mixing. It's John, you want the reference? John 16, 13 through 15. So you can do that. Another way that a theme can be developed for a VBS is a burden from the Holy Spirit. And um, you might just start sensing a recurring theme in, in when you're praying, when you're studying pastoral teachings, something keeps coming up and it doesn't really hit you. You're like, well, that's nothing to do with my life. I know for me as a women's ministry leader and sometimes as a VBS, when things keep coming at me that I'm going, this isn't, this isn't really God speaking to me about my life. I'm like, okay, is this supposed to be a conference? Is this supposed to be a retreat? Is this VBS? You know, why, why does this theme keep visiting me? And so if you're going to be thinking about putting together VBS, especially, you know, right around, you know, January, February, you know, is usually when you start thinking about the theme. You know, if something keeps coming at you, it might be God trying to deliver a theme to you for Vacation Bible School, especially if you're praying about it. Lord, what do you want for our VBS? Listen to those repeated phrases, common themes, a burden that, that the Holy Spirit starts giving you. Like, well, I didn't know I even cared for the people like this. Um, pastoral teaching is often a main conduit or vessel for God's tools to get to us. The scriptures say in Ephesians 4.11 that God himself gave some people to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers, verse 12 of Ephesians 4, for the equipping of the saints, for the work of the ministry, and for the edifying of the body of Christ. So to me, many of my women's retreat themes have come through my pastoral teaching. I'll be sitting in there and bam, I can just hear it through Pastor John. I go, that's it? That's what we're supposed to do? And I go, well, he's a pastor of the church. The Lord used him, it just jumps off his mouth, off the page, and I just sense by the Holy Spirit through pastoral teaching that that's what the theme is. Even if it doesn't a great burden to me, it just gets delivered to me like an assignment from the Lord. So in order to be led by the Holy Spirit in putting together a VBS curriculum, it's important to be a person who walks in the Holy Spirit. If you're not gonna receive from the Spirit very well, if you're only trying to do it for VBS. <laughs> But you have to be someone every day, Lord, lead me by your spirit. You know, show me what to do. You have to be someone who's filled with the Holy Spirit. And I suggest being someone who is baptized in the Holy Spirit. Saying, God, baptize me with your spirit and power. Also, being a person who recognizes the Spirit's voice. Do you, do you hear the Spirit's voice? Ask him to train you up in that. Because the anointed curriculum comes through an anointed person who's writing it, <laughs> that they're listening to the Spirit. Because then everybody goes, this is too good. This girl couldn't do it. This guy couldn't do it. It's too right on. You know, it, it's too poignant. We all know that when we hear certain Bible studies or hear certain truths, we know, like Ernie was saying earlier, that we're all a bunch of shady people. That person is just a person. So when it comes out, so we know that's the Holy Spirit. And the person needs to be someone who's available to be used by the Holy Spirit, who isn't high-minded and, and, and leaning on their own understanding and always deciding, but being a person who discovers more of what God wants to do than decide what God wants to do. And that takes time and openness and availability. It also takes a person who is dependent on the Holy Spirit, who doesn't think they can do anything apart from him, that really does say, Lord, I, I can't, I can't pay a bill without you. I can't manage money. I don't handle my sexuality without you. I don't know how to love my wife or my husband, or I don't know how to manage my time without you. That's a person who will be more sensitive to the Holy Spirit in the VBS curriculum if they're sensitive and dependent on the Holy Spirit in their day-to-day -day lives. It, it needs to be someone who doesn't, is not walking according to the flesh, a pride person. It, 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 when we're motivated by pride, It doesn't showcase the Lord. It showcases ugly. <clears throat> I'm in a lot of ministry. I speak a lot of places. I'm around a lot of people. I see events that are planned in pride. I see people doing ministry in pride. Uh, they don't know they are. 
usually, as they would probably repent and not do it, but they just got stuck in some kind of a, a pattern, they're finding their worth and what they're doing. And it, it, pride always, the Bible says, I don't have the reference, says only by pride comes contention. So they tend to be contentious, micromanagers. It has to be this way, uh -huh. you know, because their identity is in it. So you can't, you have to be a spirit-filled person who isn't finding your worth in producing the VBS curriculum. You're a servant. You're trying to deliver, you're a UPS driver. You're just delivering the package from heaven to the ministry. And you're not telling everybody, I wrote it, I wrote it. You know, you're just like, here it is, goodbye. And you know, out of the way. And you can't be motivated by pride because you'll quench the Holy Spirit. And it'll, um, it can be a very, very ugly thing. If you're someone who is, thinks your own ideas are the most important ideas to be implemented, it's not a good place to be if you're gonna write the curriculum. You, you can't be stubborn. Um, if you're a lazy person, um, you're not gonna be able to do it because it doesn't just whip out usually in like 10 minutes. Um, you have to be someone who's patient and is willing to kind of rewrite and re-edit and look at and pray and move slowly and dependently as you put it together, um, confident that God can do it through you, but not arrogant that, of course, he will. You know, there's that balance of knowing he can and knowing if you've been asked to do it, he's going to equip you. But you're not lazy. Sometimes our people are lazy and um, throw things together, but we know that the Lord deserves our best when we have the time to do that. I know there's times the Lord calls us last minute and he takes the few fish and loaves we've got. But if we've been told to prepare a meal, um, we have time to do it. So we budget that time. We don't cram it in a week before VBS or something, um, especially working on other people's deadlines. I know for me, when I've written it, whoever's asked me to do it, um, I always say, by what date do you need it? And then I work backwards from that about six weeks. And I start working on it about six weeks before it's due. So I have time. What if I get sick? You know, what if? John has to go to the hospital. I mean, I want, I want to make sure I don't mess up somebody else's schedule. And we know love is more concerned about other people's interests than our own. So we work within deadlines out of love for people. So, and we know VBS is very, uh, it's, a, it's a mechanism that has its own uh, movement. And if you don't do what you're supposed to do by the time you're supposed to do it, you mess up a lot of people. And you can't really get anywhere until the curriculum's built. You know, they can't write the songs, they can't, there's a lot of things you can't do until the curriculum is built. So um, you have to be someone who is humble to work according to other people's comfort levels, not your own. Um, it has to be a person who has the fear of the Lord. Um, you have to really approach it going, oh my gosh, I want to represent God accurately in this curriculum. I don't want to cram down people's throats what I think is important. Um, I need to fear the Lord. I'm going to be held accountable for what's given to these 300 kids. You know, if I lead a little one astray, Jesus said, I, it's better that a millstone go around my neck and I get tossed into the ocean. So that's a little scary, isn't it? <laughs> so you're moving with the fear of the Lord. I know when I sit down at my computer, I can feel the weight of the VBS curriculum on me, not in a bad way, but in a sober way, where I'm thinking, I got to please you in this, Lord. I'm excited to do this, but I'm, I'm prone to error, so please teach me. Another way we can come up with a theme besides what's relevant in the culture or maybe what the Spirit is bringing to us is when authority requests a theme. Luke 7, 6. There's a story where Jesus went with the disciples and this man, to go to this man's house whose servant was ill. And when he was already not far from the house, the centurion, the ruler over these hundreds of group of hundred soldiers sent friends to Jesus saying to him, Lord, I don't want you to trouble yourself. I'm not worthy you should enter under my roof. Verse 7 of Luke 7. Therefore, I did not even think myself worthy to come to you. But say the word and my servant will be healed. Verse 8. For I also am a man placed under authority, having soldiers under me. And I say to one, go. He goes. And to another, come. And he comes. And to my servant, do this. And he does it. Verse 9. When Jesus heard these things, he marveled at this man. 
He turned around, he said to the whole crowd that followed him, I say to you, I haven't found such great faith, not even in Israel, among the Jewish people. This had to do with the fact that this man understood authority. And he, he knew that authority was to be reverenced and obeyed and not challenged and respected. So if, 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 a, if, a, if Adrian came to me or Ernie came to me or John came to us and said, this is what the theme's supposed to be, if someone's in authority over me, I need to respect that position. Even if I have some other burden from the spirit or some other idea, I might discuss it with them. Hey, but this was on my heart because we always, we're not a cult where we just, yes sir, and we're not allowed to share ideas. But we always have that respect of maybe it's not what I'm getting and it's coming through the authority over me and I need to go with it. This has happened to me more than once. I've had a burden, a decision that somewhere I wanted to go with VBS and the person over me said, no, I really believe we're supposed to do this. And I could, then I listened, I go, I have to believe that authority. They're, they love Jesus, God put them in charge, they're over me, I'm serving them. I don't have a position in children's ministry. So everybody in children's ministry is over me. So anything they say, I need to listen to. I don't work with the kids on a weekly basis. They, they might pick up on things I, I don't even know are going on. My kids are older now, I, I'm out of tune. So I gotta respectfully he, you know, heed to their perspective and what they're hearing. In Romans 13:1. It says, let every soul be subject to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except from God, and the authorities that exist are appointed by God. Romans 13, 2 says, therefore, whoever resists authority resists the ordinance of God, and those who resist will bring judgment on themselves. So we never take it doesn't matter if you think you can do a job better, or you're more educated and they're not, their position puts them over you, and you immediately respect that. You know, Ernie's our children's ministry leader. I have great respect for his position. God put him in there. So I go with Ernie when he says things. I might give an idea, talk a little bit, and then, oh, okay, then let's do that. Okay, whatever you want me to do, Ernie, you're in charge. I'll follow what you want me to do. It's a safe way for the Church of Jesus Christ to function, is under authority. Eric's the worship leader. I am on the worship team. If he tells me something, and I go, oh, but I really like this. No, I really, oh, okay then, let's do it. You know, again, you can always dialogue with people in authority respectfully. I don't think we should walk around, um, you know, afraid to talk to authority. Our managers, we spoke to them respectfully. There's principals that we talk to respectfully. We get, inform them, maybe they didn't know something. Good authority listens to people under them as well. But in the long run, they could come up with a theme. And you have to go with that. Hebrews 13, 17 says, Obey those who rule over you, and be submissive, for they watch out for your souls as those who must give account. Let them do it with joy and not with grief. That's unprofitable for you. We don't want to be stubborn people. Spirit-led people are not stubborn people. They can yield to somebody else's ideas. Because it's, you know, we see through a, gra a glass dimly. It's pretty hard to be so confident in what you've received that you want to resist authority. Now, if you really believe you got a word, you could, should tell the person the authority. I really believe the Holy Spirit gave this to me. Can you at least pray on it? And they can come back, but let it go. We need to not be high-minded in developing our curriculum or stubborn or stiff-necked. Only God knows what these little ones need at the time that they're gonna come. When I prepare a women's retreat, I always say, well, Lord, you know what people are going to face in November that they don't even know. They're going to, it's going to happen on October 21st. And God's having something in my study, and i got to go with it because he knows where everybody's at and what they're going to face. And so we, he is in charge <laughs> of the church. So we have to move with great humility of mind and a sense of I don't know everything. And it doesn't matter how much I know the Bible, how long I've got the Bible, I'm not God, and God knows people. And God knows these little ones. They know if that little one's going to come in and their daddy just got arrested last week. They're going to know if their mama's dying of cancer. He's going to know things and have a theme that we may not think of because we've never been through that. But God wanted it for little, you know, Theodore because he needed to hear that at this year's VBS. And we respectfully submit to God being in charge. Always listen to your pastors, your children's ministry leader, and anybody in authority over you if you are asked to develop a curriculum. Another way we can get the theme is observation 
of the flock itself. Even though it's an outreach, sometimes the children at the church can be a barometer for what kids need. If you're in children's ministry, start noticing what are some of the common questions the kids are asking? What are they confused about? They maybe need to learn. What kind of problems are they dealing with? What do they get excited about when we teach it? What do they seem ignorant of? What, what are they, you know, you, you just kind of, the Bible says you're supposed to know the state of your flock. So if you're in children's ministry, kind of as you're deciding on a VBS theme, listen. You might get the theme through the kids because you go, oh, they're all dealing with da 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 or something. You know, that's interesting. Or um, also prayerfully walk through the church or the community and say, Lord, put on my heart what's for the VBS, you know, this year. Walk up and down, go into the apartment building just quietly and walk and just pray and see what he gives. These are all different ways you can get themes. And by the way, I'm not the expert on VBS curriculum. I, I, I haven't written the book on it. I'm just feeling like God's shown me a lot through these last how many years that I've written them. Like, I don't know, 15 years I've written them. And so I'm just sharing the things that he's shown me. And then you can say, oh, I don't like any of those ideas. And God can give you a whole other idea. But these are just some ideas. Um, go to the park. Listen to the kids' conversations. What do they say? You jerk, you idiot. Well, so the name calling is a problem. Like, oh, fat, so, oh, so people feel identified by what, hmm, or that kid's left out. Or, you know, kind of also consider the children in your family, your nieces, nephews, cousins, grandchildren, people in your neighborhood. And, and maybe you'll get a barometer of what their spiritual nutrition needs are that are going to be coming in from the community. So those are the ways that you can come up with themes that I found. Um, but I want us all to remember that trusting that all truth is good. Don't sweat it too much. I don't know if it's in the spirit. Ah, you know, God doesn't want us to move with that kind of fear in serving him. Anything we teach them from the Bible is great. We can just go, you know what? We're just going to study this. Because you, you just, I don't know why, but you did. You can do it. 2 Timothy 3.16 says, all scripture is given by the breath of God. And it's going to profit people for doctrine, to correct them, to tell them they're wrong, to instruct them in the right ways, so that the man of God would be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. When we give anything from the Bible, we are ahead of the game. So it, it's not something to belabor in a stressful way. It's just different ways that you can come up with a theme, but don't panic. Did I not hear God right? If we're giving out the word, it doesn't matter. I know there's been times where I've been asked to speak places and they don't give me a topic. And I don't even sense like this great revelation of, of what God wants. And then I go, you know what? My confidence is not in revelation. My confidence is in the written word of God. I can go to any psalm and teach anything, and he will send his word, and it will not return void, and I don't have to be all ooey-gooey about everything I do. I am going to be, God will bless his word. So if you end up with all those things, you still don't know what the theme is, it's okay. You can pick something from the Bible and just teach it. Oh, I like shepherd and sheep. But is it the spirit? It doesn't matter. The spirit wrote John 15, um, or not John 15, John 14, and I can do it because it's in the Bible, and I'm teaching in the Bible. It's okay. So when I give you all these methods, they're not to freak you out. They're just ways, and you could like take them all, throw them over the window, and just decide if you so decide to. It's all good. In Mark 4:26, Jesus said that the kingdom of God is as if a man should scatter seed on the ground. Mark 4:26. And in verse 27, he, he's going to sleep at night and every day get up. And then all of a sudden the seed's going to sprout and grow and he doesn't even know how that happened. So we plant and scatter seed to these kids. They leave us after a week. The majority do not come back here. But the word of God is seed. And it goes into them. And now after being a church here for over 30 years, we have so many adults coming back saying, I remember VBS. That's encouraging to us for our VBSs now because we have time to be at the same place and have these kids come back as adults. One is, was a youth leader, got saved at our VBS, now leading a high school, he's a youth pastor. You're going, look at that, look at that. Look where the seed grew and we had nothing to do. We just scattered it one week, went crazy, taught them, bye, and now there's a youth pastor over there. None of us can take credit for that. So we don't have to panic. We don't feel the spirit anointed 
See, you know, I like those. It doesn't always work where we pick up on that. Sometimes the Spirit of God anoints things, and we don't pick up on it. But it's still anointed. <laughs> he doesn't have to show us it's anointed for it to be anointed. Luke 8, 11 says that the seed is the word of God. The seed is. So there's a famine, you guys, for the word of God. And um, it, the, the, this land has a lot of programs, self-help things, positive thoughts, but kids don't even know the basic things in Bible anymore. They don't even know who Jesus is anymore. So we're way ahead of the game. That's in Luke 8, 11. <coughs> so now, the next second. Okay, any questions on the theme? Picking up the theme of the ideas I gave on that. Is that good? You can hold them until the end, too, if you'd like. Do you want to hold it? Okay. Because uh, I'll turn this off after the main teaching for dialogue. Uh, main verse. Now, when you're trying to get God's theme, let's say you're kind of going, okay, yes. Would you want me to hold it? or? Uh, well, let's ask it and see I, if it's I a good one. definitely like what, on the end when he said, trust all truth is, is, God, is good. Mm -hmm. You know, because sometimes when you... Um, you kind of want to speak like those pastors that you hear and, and quote every single verse out of the Bible and tell a story like perfectly using, using I guess you know Bible scriptures instead of your own words. So I, I, I kind of like that too because um, there was a couple of times I was afraid to share the share the, the gospel because of the words that I didn't know how to use. Right, but if it's truth, it's powerful. Right. Yeah, it doesn't matter. That's a that's a bullying tactic of the devil. You know, that you can't do this. Jeremiah, you know, I'm a youth. And the Lord said, do not say that you are a youth. You will go to the people I send you, and the things that I tell you to say, you'll say. Is that, yes, Clara. Can't you use, like, the, um, the verses, like in the children's Bible, so that the wording is more... Yeah, we're going to get to that a little bit more on how the words, the verses themselves, how to communicate them. Good point, good point. We're definitely going to get to that. And that's really good because I have to remember about children's Bibles. Um, okay, so let's say you have a, a guiding theme. Let's say you don't get a verse. You just get a theme of angry birds or you get a theme of um, identity. Or, you know, it's, you don't even get a verse. You just kind of get this theme that's coming to you. Um, I think, like, I remember um, uh, Marcy, Marcella, said one time she said, we need to speak about creation because everybody believes in evolution in the schools and some of the kids don't even know the creation story. And we gotta bring it in and we gotta have science and we gotta have this and we gotta have that. And I remember at first I didn't, I was, I didn't like it. Yeah. I mean, I liked the, what she observed, but I didn't know how to implement it in VBS. And then I realized that she was the children's ministry director. Why? I go, okay, she's obviously picking up on things because she's in that position. So I need to align to her. I need to just say, no, I don't see it. But I don't need to see it. I need to serve her vision. That's the key. And so um, it was really neat. You know, she, but you still had to come up with the key verse. And she came up with the one that says um, that the, the evidence, the th no, the creation, yeah, the, it was called Creation Speaks. It was a verse where the, what we see displays the invisible attributes of God. And um, we summarized it to just Creation Speaks. Because it was, but that's a long verse. So just to say that creation is speaking that there's a creator. It was a, it was, it was a great VBS, and I loved it. And um, it kind of evolved. And that's what we have to do when we're doing VBS is we're starting out with like a little idea, a little snowball, and we're rolling it down the hill, and it's, it's getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And so you get that idea. Now you have to come up with a verse and for, the, for the whole week, a guiding verse. This is the tether for everything you're doing that week. You've got to find a verse that communicates what your burden is, what you're picking up on. Um, even if you hear it through another verse of teaching, but you go, no, that's not the verse though. That verse tells me what I'm supposed to have it on, but that's not the theme verse. So it's the verse that allows everything else to hang from it. Um, narrow it down to what the verse states, the overall theme of the week. You can use a concordance. Um, those are books that have paper. But now we can do search engines. You can just, if you think it's about strength or spiritual warfare, you can type it in, you know, Bible verse warfare. Um, I have a software that I use to study. But now we have Google, so you can look for verses like that. You can even ask people, what, what verse do you think of when you think of being strong in the Lord? You can interview people. Um, you, you can really get involved in making the VBS curriculum where you see it start to, you know, 
form and grow. And you're like, and you can ask other people what comes to their mind. You can use a topical Bible. If you go online or, or get one, it's called Nave's Topical Bible. And it, they're really good. You can look at it online. I think it's free online. What is it called? Naves, N-A-V-E apostrophe S. And they have verses arranged according to topic, not word, like strength. Not everything will have the word strength, but it'll all have to do with strength. So that's a really fun, I used to read that before I go to bed every night. I'd read a, a different section of the topical Bible and just find different verses related to certain topics. It was just so refreshing. Um, it has to be something that anchors everything to it. Um, usually, usually the verse would be a command, a psalm, or a declarative statement. It, it has to be something very succinct that pulls it all together. It can't be 25 verses. It's one verse that can be condensed, that really has a punch. So you might get like 10 of them and go, well, huh. I wonder which one really, and pray over it. Think about it, read it, memorize it. What's hard to memorize for you? It'll be really hard for the kids mm -hmm. to do that. The what? Command what? Um, psalm. A psalm or a declarative statement, announcing something that's true, telling somebody what to do, or something like in a psalm. It wouldn't be just like somewhere in the Bible that has the word strength, that it has to say the whole thing in that verse. So that's hard sometimes <laughs> to find one verse that summarizes a, a week long of truth you're going to teach the kids. But it's fun when you find it because that's it. You feel like you know you're playing a slot machine, all the cherries lined up. You're like ding 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 ding. You're like that's it. Um, you know, this is good, Clara, because this is where I talk about the version to use. You want to use a child friendly version, a child's Bible. Or, I know you guys might not agree with me, but we've done it for many years. Or a combination of versions. I mix them up in the one verse. <laughs> I pick out. I like this from New King James. I like this from NIV. I like that from that one. And I, kind of, and I, make, I don't even write a version under it, because I mix it up. People call it the Morian Schaefer versions. I'll just take it from three different versions. Or I might even change a word. That's easier for the kids to understand, but I know it's true to the Greek or the Hebrew. I'll usually look up the definition of the word, make sure I'm not misinterpreting the word. The kids, you know, I, I hate to say it, but we have a very illiterate children these days. They don't read very much. The vocabulary is limited. They don't articulate well. When kids give up and give testimonies up here, like, um, well, yeah, I went on the mission trip. Um, yeah, well, um, like they don't know even how to speak publicly to say things. That's not making fun of them. That's just where it's at among the kids now. The, the, well, and who knows? Or the school or the home or the kids. I don't know. People, their parents immigrated. They, they don't, they're shy people, kids. And there's a lot of reasons why they don't. But we, we don't live in uh, Palace Verdes while the kids are going to private schools and they're on the big teams. We live in an area where people are more simple, not stupid, just simple. They don't, they're, you're going to lose them if you make the, the message, the, if they don't even understand the words of the message, they're not going to understand the message. So you have to give them at their level so they get the words. Even if you know the best word to say it, you just throw it out the window and you find another one that your audience can understand. Because the idea of words is to communicate well. And that's what we're trying to do with the kids. So when you're looking for a version, you have to be careful about certain ones. Like, like even, um, you know, if, if there's, there's words in the New King James Version that people don't even know what those words are. And I have to explain them to people. That's how quickly language is um, digressing in, in this region here, and in a lot of regions. But this is our area. You know, we have to be sensitive to our area and what people understand. A lot of the kids here um, and that we bring in, they're just um, easily distracted. They don't know how to sit and listen for a long time. Um, they're just not trained in those things anymore. Um, there's new philosophies of education that have kind of swapped out priorities. I'm not saying it's right or wrong. I'm just saying that's what we're working with. So I've noticed, you know, trying to talk to kids and changing things and when I'm talking, you know, the way I teach 
kids is not the way I teach women. You know? And if I go to a drug rehab center and I teach there or into the jail, I'm using a completely different language when I'm with the ladies in jail. Then um, all of a sudden I'm invited to like this thing I'm going to, this regional conference for this denomination for all these people. It's going to be a different way to talk to them. But when I'm in the, in the jail, I'm going to be like, you know, and you're feeling this, and I just have to be one of the people. Well, they're not going to listen to me. I have to make them think I just got out last week. <laughs> I just change when I go in there. So make sure that the version you use is um, the kids can understand it. And that's why sometimes I'll even change things. I don't know which ones I've done in here, but I know that even if I say to be strong in the power of his might or something, or authority, I might change more to you know, his position, or I don't know. I'll just kind of pray over it to make it easy for the kids. Because VBS is, believe it or not, for the kids and not for those of us who put it on. I also, when I was a teacher in VBS, <coughs> I, it's a tricky job. You gotta teach like five-year-olds and then you got these like cool junior hires. Yeah. And you gotta teach all of them in a different words, the way you approach the text, you have to put on a different hat with every group that comes in. I found that I think I was trained the most as a teacher, Bible teacher, teaching BBS, because having to change. And to know that a lot of kids don't know words. Like when we used to do the worship song, remember it says about I, I'm crucified. 90% of the kids in each group, I don't know what crucified is. They never heard of that word. And they were all, Jesus was crucified. And like, yeah, whatever, where's the candy? They don't, they're not even getting it. They don't even know the word crucified. And that's why we have to be, especially words in the Bible, people don't know them. So we have to be very careful. Be creative, but be, be true to the text. You can pick something out of the Old Testament or the New Testament. It has to be an overall theme. So that's for the theme verse for the week. Then uh, the daily verses. I want to remind us all that this is vacation Bible school. It's not vacation singing school. It's not vacation snack school. It's not vacation dancing school. It's not vacation craft school. It's vacation Bible school. And I'm not on a bandwagon to teach the Bible because I happen to be a Bible teacher. That's just what it is. <laughs> and we have to keep the main thing the main thing. And bless you. And I know that sometimes we get so busy doing all the foo-foo things, we never give the kids the Bible. And I think we fail. I just really think we fail. They have crafts, they have marshmallows, they can boogie. But they don't, what? no, I didn't learn anything from the Bible that week. That's scary. <laughs> so remember, we're not there just to give kids fun. We want everything we do that's even fun to showcase the Bible. There is a famine for the Word of God. The Word of God is full of power. The Word of God is alive. The Word of God is able to go in and make someone born again. So it's being born again by the incorruptible seed of the Word of God. The word of God will resonate with these kids. They won't remember the craft. They, they won't. They won't. They might remember the dance for a few years. But the word of God, once it gets planted, those seeds, forget it. It, it won't return. It'll, it'll nag them for the rest of their lives. So we want them to know the Bible. One of the things that I think is important to do for daily teaching, when you're making the daily teachings, is I, I'm calling it attach a narrative. What's a narrative? A narrative is a story in the Bible. It's talking about a real life event that happened in the Bible. Uh, what are some examples of stories in the Bible? David and Goliath. What? David and Goliath. David and Goliath. Noah's Ark. Jonah. 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 Joseph. Joseph. Moses. Moses. Yeah. Moses, yeah. Sure. How about Jesus on the boat calming the right. storms? If you walk on the water, these are stories. Kids love stories. They don't want a bunch of facts. We know that they really are facts. But they think it's a story. Because it is a story that's full of facts <laughs> and truths. So I don't believe in going into the kids and giving them topical studies every day. I don't think they remember them. I don't think um, they can follow them. I think it's just throwing a bunch of information and there's nothing pulling it together. You tell a kid a story, and you get them on the edge of their seat, they're in. You know, like, and you can see it. That's like the fourth and fifth graders are the best to teach at VBS. They're just perfect age, young enough to be impressed, you know, and, and old enough 
to um, understand more. And there was like, and then what happened? And then, and then what happened? And you, you tell these stories. And so I believe that the daily uh, scripture has to be related to a story. Okay, and you can have just a regular scripture. Like let's say um, the scripture is be not afraid. But the story is Peter walking on the water. So the verse, the Bible verse that day really isn't in the story, is it? It's a command, be not afraid. It's in Isaiah. Mm -hmm. But you're talking to them about Peter going, well, if you bid me, I'll come. And the kids are attaching, like, today, boys and girls, the verse is, should be up on the thing, be not afraid. Well, I'm going to tell you a story about a time when I would have been afraid. Jesus was out, you know, the apostles were on the boat. At, and then when you have the little five-year-olds, you're going, everybody be a boat, everybody be a boat, because <laughs> you have to do that with all of them. And water is coming in. Throw water on everybody. Go on. Everybody. You know, oh, gosh, you're just sweating at the end of those little five-year-olds. I lose weight teaching those little kids. But you have to move them around, you know. You get the older kids. Okay, today's about be not afraid. You don't start with the junior high. I'm going to tell you a story. So, uh, you know, you go, but let me tell you about something that really happened in a place I actually went and saw the Sea of Galilee. I went on a boat on it. What? Yeah, it's a real place. You know, I would say that to the older kids. You pull them in with, okay, I, I don't want to hear stories. I want truth. I'm sick of stories. These Bible stories don't hold up to science that I'm hearing in my school. So you start giving them more truth and facts, and you tell them what happened. So you want to have narratives, I believe, attached each day to whatever ever Bible verse you're going to have. It can start with a story, and you end up with the the, um, the truth, or you can start with the truth and find a story. I remember sometimes I would find a, a, a scripture, and I go, well, what Bible story best displays that truth? And I read through just the different Bible stories, and I go, oh, this one is it. You know, I haul into it and excited. Really avoiding topical teachings. The theme is a topic. Daily teachings, in my opinion, should always be stories that showcase the truth. The Bible verse they're learning in the song in all those areas is not necessarily from the story. It's the truth attached to that story. And I think the kids remember it better that way. Um, so now, and then you have to decide on the five days. Is the first day you're gonna just do the main verse and do a story about the main verse, the theme? We've never done that, but you can. You know, you could start with that, just the theme verse and the story for the theme verse. And the next day can be a different one. And, or, um, you can always remember, too, that the teachers need to know every day they have to reiterate the theme verse. You, and, you, and you want everybody at every station to know the theme verse. Um, you want people to say it, give stickers maybe to kids as they repeat it. You know, I'd like to see more of that. Just come up, do you know the theme verse? Oh, no, let's learn it. You know, I wish the team leaders would get them to learn the verses and give them stickers the more they remember. Or every word, you get another sticker that you get right from the verse. You know, just give them the Bible. Um, have completely different stories each day, or what if it's one continuing story? And it's the life of Paul, or it's Joseph, and every day you're, you're following Joseph's life. You could do it that way. Even if we have different kids that come in each day, the stories can stand alone. So you can decide what works well, a, a continuous story, or it should be Old Testament, New Testament, it doesn't matter. Remember that all of them should support the same verse, or grow from the same verse. Always go back and test it against the theme. You can start getting excited about something, and you've, you've, gone, like, you know, you've gone in the wrong direction. Um, look at familiar stories that you've always heard with the theme in mind. They're not familiar to most of the kids. To you, it's old hat. To them, they've never heard it. Look at a person. What if you wanted to do it as a person? We're going to just follow the life of Moses, the life of Paul. We're going to follow the, you know, it could be that. I mean, you, you can do a lot of things. Um, you can look at similar experiences. If you're talking about fear, oh, we can do Daniel in the lion's den one day, Shadrach and his friends are fired, Joseph in prison. Let's say it's all about, you know, God talks to us. Okay, we could do it, a story about how he did it by dreams. We could talk about the story of the prophet that came. We could do it about, you know, you, it's kind of fun. Once you get the first thing going, you can kind of run in a lot of directions. Finally, on this part, the hardest thing is so always remember is you have to be able to point eventually to Jesus and the gospel, to what he did on the cross. And I've never had a problem tying it in because that's, that's the crux. Jesus always makes it work out. Somehow on that day four or day five, it's got to come into Jesus. If it's not about fear, then we could talk about you know him on the cross and he was afraid to go to the cross. 
but he prayed in Gethsemane, and he was strengthened, and God sent angels to minister to him. Do you know what he did on that cross for us, boys and girls? Do you know what a wooden cross is? They call that crucifixion. And you, you want it eventually on Thursday or Friday, you want to somehow get the gospel in there as a, as a main teaching. As a teacher of the Bible room, you try to preach the gospel every single day because kids don't come back. So you say something about it. I, I try to every time I teach each group because I don't want them to miss that. You know, they know about Noah, but they don't know their sins can be forgiven. I want to make sure. Um, he is the word made flesh. So we know that in Luke 24, 27, he began at Moses and all the prophets, and he expounded to them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. Luke 24, 27. So he, all the scriptures will point to Jesus. They always will. If, they, if you can't see it, ask somebody, Pastor John, another Bible teacher, and they could come up with that. If this is your first time writing it, use resources. Work. Like last year, I didn't do any of the songs, but I met with each person as they wrote the songs and collaborated because I've been doing it for years. So I could give them ideas that maybe they didn't have. And they just agreed on some. I said, you're free to do that. I'm not an authority. I'm just a mentor. So you know, stay with your idea. But you still talk back and forth and pour into each other. So we equip each other to keep the kingdom going. Um, resources. Uh, running a VBS um, and what you're writing because you're not always writing just the theme you're on it on it you might also be writing suggestions from snack room you know like this is about the fish a bunch of fish Peter caught maybe goldfish crackers like you can write suggestions but I know that here we give each area a lot of freedom to do what they want to do but writing the curriculum you can always make suggestions you know I suggest the um, craft you do this or the you know, you can do that. But remember what we have at whatever church you're at. If you don't have a lot of musical people, you might not have a song station. If you don't have a kitchen, you might not have these incredible, you know, snacks. Or maybe you're not going to do snacks. You're going to do it between 8 and 11.30, and there's no snack. You know, you don't have to do it the way another church does it. <laughs> you can do it the way your church, maybe you're in the Philippines, you're in the jungle, and you're taking VBS every day to people. You're not going to have rooms to go to. You're going to have to come up with how it works with what you've got. Um, know, what God, know that God knows what kind of VBS you're supposed to implement. And he'll send the people he wants on the team. Don't look at what you don't have. It's a waste of energy. What are you looking at? <laughs> it's not there. You know, look at what you have. Release ideas which you're crazy about but can't be implemented. Just let them go. You know, the church doesn't have the money. Um, you're striving. You know, we just let them go. Maybe next year. Let it go. Um, embrace any ideas your sense of spirit is drawing you to, though, even if you don't see how it can be done. Sometimes they'll say, do it. But we don't have it. I know. Do it. Like, I can't feed the people's mission loans. Doesn't matter. Use the little bit you have. So it's not quenching. Sometimes you take a step of faith in something you don't think your church can do. But other times, let it go if it's not there. <clears throat> Utilize what you have. Consider all the players in your team, in your church, and write the curriculum with them in mind. Be creative and open to fresh manna. I want you to all expect opposition to whatever you put together. Someone's going to hate it. Someone's not going to like it. Someone's going to disagree with it. They're welcome to. But it doesn't mean you have to change it. <laughs> so it's, it's a battle for the kids, and the devil's going to do that. Um, listen to the people and consider with humility of mind. Stay with what you believe God has led you to do, but be open to revision or refining or ideas. VBS is a team effort. And if you're, blah, 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 you're going to lose everybody. Nobody's going to help you. <laughs> so you've got to work as a team, but still be the head coach. And a head coach will listen to the players sometimes and say, but no, Tiny's too tiny to run to the end zone. He's going to get creamed, you know. Well, no, he can do it. No, he can't. He's crying over there. He saw the playbook. You know, okay, maybe Tiny shouldn't do that. So um, just be faithful with what you have. Um, don't go to money and laziness. Don't make the church buy a prepackaged VBS curriculum if you're not Whittier Area Baptist Fellowship or whatever. Like, they're, they're, they're thousands of dollars. We bought them here. And, and they, were the, um, they were the least creative and fun VBSs that we had here. I mean, well, I wouldn't say fun because it's always fun. But people had a hard time implementing the prefect. We didn't connect with it emotionally, the, all of us, the teacher, everybody. We did it for a few years, great curriculum, great teaching. 
If your church can afford it and that's, they do well with it, go for it. But this is about developing your own. It's amazing what you can do on your own for your group of people at such a time as this. Um, do you have a kitchen? Use it. A building? Use it. Young people? Use them. Older adults? Use them. Um, also, uh, teaching the truth. Um, remember, it's, it's vacation Bible school. Um, don't get so caught up in the dances, snacks, crafts, and decor that you can't find the Bible. Okay? So all of the things that those do should support and reinforce. The station should be like a ring setting that showcases the duel, or serving ware that the, the steak is on, or side dishes that complement the main dish. They can be so important and effective. The dancing, the, you know, when we get everybody tired, which they used to do, I don't know what you guys do now, they used to get everybody tired, and then they'd come in the Bible, because they'd be happy to sit down and listen. I get this smell, you know, I sweat. I remember, like, oh my gosh, this is so hard, everybody stinks. But I gotta teach them. No, I put things here, you know, and that room is all closed, you yeah, know. You get, but you get sweaty doing it too. Yes, <laughs> but they would be so tired, like that they would listen to the VBS. Like we found out that putting the little four and five year olds in there first thing in the morning. No, do not give them to me the first thing in the morning on VBS. It's like they're like ah, <laughs> just like wired, you know. Or feed them the, the four and five year olds. We feed them. They get kind of quiet right afterwards. You know, you kind of figure that out. So those stations help with the teaching of the Bible when those things come. Or when they're walking and then they hear the song and dance. You know, we didn't have dance for a long time. That was a new thing because there were girls that wanted to do dance. You know, maybe one year, no, we have to have dance. That's what we do every year. No, we don't. Nobody dances. We don't do the dance. Well, what will we do the parent night? Something else. Or what if you're not supposed to have the parent night? You know, maybe it's a year you're not supposed to have parent night. It's okay. Um, they can be distracting. And consider the best way to teach as it's implemented. This is because other people from other churches, a, a verbal person, video, acting out, flannel boards, small groups. Um, think about your group at your church when writing. Um, I know on mine, sometimes when I'm not the Bible teacher, I pre-write out detailed teaching notes for whoever's going to teach because I have the gift of teaching. So maybe they don't know if they have the gift yet. They think they do. I try to give them stuff to work with. They don't have to do it that way, but at least they can read through it and get an idea of where they can go. So think about that when you're writing it. Um, maybe you don't have a gift of teaching, but you have the whole theme. Go to somebody who does and say, can you write out notes over the verses I picked? And to throw them in. You know, I've done it mostly by myself, but there can be a team of people writing the curriculum this year. An overseer, and I want you to do the notes, and you do this, and I'm going to give you Monday, I'm going to give you Tuesday, I'm going to give you Wednesday. You could do it that way. I mean, it doesn't have to be the way it's always been. Um, overall, daily goals should always support the weekly goal. Keep it in mind when writing it. And if um, some churches do it differently, they don't have stations, everything's in one classroom the whole day. And so think about that, that you're going to have a lot of different people teaching the same truth. In our church, we have one teacher and he rotates stations and that person does that. So think about that. If you're gonna have a lot of volunteers, maybe the way you write the curriculum is gonna be a little bit different because you, you're gonna equip like 20 different people to teach the Bible. Just think about that. And sense the Spirit's restraint and leading. As you write, as you edit, as you read it, as you put it on paper, go fast with it when you sense the Spirit says, go, just run with it. Stop when it seems like you're forcing it. And be in fellowship with him while you're writing it. Like, let it be you and Jesus doing it. And then the last thing I'm going to mention for writing curriculum is to, um, you know, I think it's always good to write down discussion questions in the curriculum. They don't have to use them. But what it does, it's a good way to see if the teaching you have is relatable. Like, like, so, like the answer a teacher is always supposed to say is after they teach, the question you should hear is, so what? Like, well, you need this because. Like, there has to be, like, you can ask questions, like, have you ever been afraid? Did you ever sense that you had to get out of the boat or do something you thought was impossible? Tell us about it. You know, because in Bible, one of the things, one of my favorite times in Bible is when I'm done teaching and we do these questions <laughs> and then we have people, we, we sh sh let me hear that and say, how did you feel about that? Did anybody else have something? Raise your hand if you've all been through that before. And they're all like with it. You know, they're, they're all in the story, they're all connected. Be a kid when you're writing it. 
Put yourself in various scenarios, a divorced home, no knowledge of God, raised in the church, homeschooled. You know, we have all these different kinds of kids that come to our BBSs. And remember to just be a vessel for him to use to proclaim who he is, what Christ has done, the purpose of man to these children. God says, Jesus says in John 15, 16, you did not choose me. I chose you. I appointed you. That you're supposed to go out there and bear fruit. And I want your fruit to remain. And in John 15, 8, Jesus said, by this my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit, so you'll be my disciples. So it's his desire that the curriculum bears fruit. You're in his will. He wants his seed scattered. It's, it's, it's not an empty pursuit. It's a noble pursuit. And you can move with confidence that God wants it to be fruitful and he wants it to be effective. You're not going to fail. If you move by the Spirit, follow some of these tips, make yourself available and say, here I am, send me. God can use you to write an entire VBS curriculum for a church. So I'm going to close in prayer for the teaching part and then we'll do dialogue, okay? Lord, thank you for these ideas. I pray that they would help people, equip people, excite people, send people in a direction I didn't even say that you used to kind of let them trampoline off of what I said and anoint this teaching, that it would bring forth fruit that would remain and that, Father, you would be glorified. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.